Top of the morning, welcome back. This is the Game Changer Podcast with Satya Mangali. You guys better get your minds right and get up and let's go. Go, go. Uh-huh. See, it's more than the game that we change. We don't do it for the black. What is the cost of staying where you are? See, some of you right now, you stand at this current reality right here. You come here for the last two days and you start to get real. You start to share. I've sat down here and I'm like, oh man, I, I start to cry because I can feel you for the first time in your life. You start to tell the truth. You start to be real. And you feel in a place where you're like, I, I can tell people how I really feel. I love it. One of our sweet sisters in, it was, uh, in here was up here and she was just emotional. She's like, man, I'm afraid. And I'm like, guess what? And I was looking at her in the eyes and I said, guess what I felt for the last three months leading up to this? She's like, what? I'm like, the same thing you're feeling. Fear, doubt, unworthiness. Before the big events in our life, before the peaks of possibility and the peaks where the promises are and the prizes that we desire, before and after comes a resistance. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. Yeah. So many of you come to this experience, this is why I shot the video about opposition. I'm like, get to the room. Because you know, you make this conversation with Willie, you're like, I'm in, charge my card. And then the resistance is like, no, we're gonna try to keep you back because if you go to, whether it's this event or something significant, life-changing, the resistance tries to get in the way every single time. But now you're here, you're here in the room. And you stand here at a place called current reality, and for the first time, for many of you, you're like, man, I can clearly see where I'm at. How many of you could see something different when we did current reality? Raise your hand. And some of you are like, dude, I saw something. How many of you saw something when we had you write down the story that gets in the way? Raise your hand. Some of you are like, yeah, I get this. And now here we are at current reality. When I ask this question here, what is the cost of staying where you are? It looks like this. Some of you think the gap is right there. And if that's as big as the gap is, all you have to do is like, oh, it's, my life's not too bad. My business is pretty good. And you're like, don't need too much help. You help me, Satema. But the truth is this, especially as a business owner and an entrepreneur, the gap actually is like this. And if you are deceived, or Spencer talked about if you're delusional, you know, I'm, we're not too bad. We're fine. And what happens is a very treacherous, dangerous journey. So again, what is the, here's my question. What is the cost if you stay where you're at? I want you to write this down. Just put an answer down. Some of you are like, well, there's, there's not really a financial cost, but maybe there's an emotional cost. Maybe there's an energetic cost. What is the cost if you continue to do what you've been doing? If you continue to worship the fear and the doubt, what is the cost if you continue to stay inside of a business or a relationship that you know is not right? What is that cost? Had I stayed knocking doors, I would have made that next year probably three quarters of a million dollars. That was, that was the pace I was on. So we were excited because I had a five-year plan when I went to knock doors. I'm like, I'm gonna go knock doors. By year five, I will I'll, I'll take home a million. Cool. And as I sat there, again, here's the question. What's the cost? And the voice speaks to me and says, it's time. Like, so I go home and tell my wife, I'm like, I'm gonna leave to do this coaching thing. And she literally drops to her knees and just starts to cry. Why did she cry? Because in 2008, 2009, 2010, September tried to do what I'm doing today. And we failed miserably. I didn't have the coaches. I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have the skill sets. I did not have the power. 
I grab my wife by the hands, I get on my knees, and she's sobbing. She's like, please don't do this. Vivint, the company, there's a headquarters, and it's worth a billion dollars. And there's like, we get a paycheck, we got so much money, and you're on the videos. And she just went on and on. And I looked at her in the eyes. And I grabbed her hands. And I already fucking knew. I'm committed. I know. I grabbed her hands, looked her in the eyes, I said, baby, I got this. I need you to trust me. And it was my certainty. I was like, I need you to trust me. I got you. I got this. I got us. Now, I went out and hired coaches. $80,000 goes out the door. Again, I wasn't a great communicator back then, not like today. And my wife's like, where's the money? I'm like, what money? There's a lot of money that just left the account. I'm like, well, remember, remember we talked about this? And she's like, we talked about it, but we didn't say we were doing it. And I'm like, well, I'm doing it. And the money's gone. And I just need you to trust me. Because I knew in here what I needed to do. Had I stayed at Vivint, no question, probably make three quarters of a million. Year five, probably do a million. Then I'm this door-to-door -door guy with my teams. But I fail to reach who I was supposed to reach. Because I heard the voice clearly. It's time. And as I've continued to invest in myself and hire the coaches and hire more coaches and hire more coaches and invest when I did not have the money and invest when the voice said, go. I'm like, okay. Here we are. Now I see here we are and here, but the clients and the lives of many of you who have been touched and moved, people who aren't even in this room. What's the cost if I stay doing what I was doing? It's massive. I don't meet Spencer, I don't meet Berg, Jack, and many of you. My soul would be empty. What is the cost if you don't move? So as I leave you with this, tomorrow, we're gonna finish the 13 principles. I know we were gonna do it today, we didn't. I'm gonna teach you a tool of how to deal with the thoughts that come in here that are so like, I'm doing my conscious self-creation, but they still have this thing. I'm like, I got it. We're gonna show you some marketing and sales mechanisms, and then we're gonna teach you tomorrow's the big relationship day, creator. How to connect, how to like be with people, how to mend and heal the relationships. And then Saturday, we take it home. I make you this promise. If you are the business owner who's like, owner's club, Spencer, Satema, organization, four spots. That is you, you will know. You're gonna click the link, put your deposit in, fill out an application, we'll have a conversation. If it's not for you, we just refund your money. For one or two of you in here who are like, Satema's my guy. And you're like, one-on-one -on -one is something I want to do. I need to do, I must do. Just come find me, I'll tell you exactly what needs to happen. I'll leave you with this story to close out the day. Some of you might have heard this before. So if you've heard this before, just act like you haven't heard it before. I love this story because I heard this and I think about it often. So as we close out the owner day, here it is. <clears throat> There's a man. Who walks upon three men on the stage or um, like working. This man walks up and he sees three stone cutters. This guy's like, huh, this is interesting. They're all doing the same job, but they're so different. The energy's different, the movement's different. So he walks up to the first person, he's like, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, dude, just leave me alone. I'm just trying to earn a dollar, trying to get some money, man. Okay, step his back. Goes to the next person. 
excuse me, what are you doing? He's like, oh, oh, man, I'm in, we're building this building. Steps back. But the third person he walks up to and he's like, hmm, this dude is moving and grooving. There's, a, there's an energy about him. Walks up and he taps him on the shoulder. Taps him on the shoulder. And the guy's just working. He's like, pats him hard. He's like, oh, yo, what's up? He's like, what are you doing? Stonecutter gets up and says, excuse me? He says, what are you doing? He says, and he squares up on him. He says, I am building a school where tens of thousands of kids are going to come in. And we're going to educate them and we're going to send them out into the world to change lives. Three people doing the same thing and yet one had something different. That word is perspective. When you have a shift in your perspective, one insight that can radically push the boundaries and limits of what you think is possible, you will be amazed at what begins to come into your life, physically, spiritually, relationally, and financially. I invite you as you leave here tonight and to go be with people, as you look at your journal and review your notes, as you take time to connect with loved ones and FaceTime children, and just reflect on the day today, what you felt, what you experienced, what you saw, what you heard from Vandana, from Merchant, from Spencer, from the panel, and what the voice has taught you. Ask for this. What is the perspective that I need to have to make the leaps and the bounds of faith and to have the courage? Let's go. Go, 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 uh -huh. go, go. See, it's more than the game that we changing. We don't do it for the block, do it for the name. Yeah. No, there ain't no stopping it. If you really want it, better rock with it. This is how to be a game changer. Better put your pride down, heavy, get your pen up. Wanna be the greatest, we ain't stopping.